Hi, and welcome back. So finally, we can get started with the logistic regression implementation in scikit-learn. So if you remember from the previous video, let me just scroll up slightly here, we have x and we have y. So x is the features and y is targets, namely the two classes we have left. And we now want to do the machine learning model. So first of all, we need to divide it into training sets and testing sets. Sina told you about this in the previous video. Then we use train test split. What I always do is just for me to press shift tab to get the documentation. And here you can find a nice example. I think if you scroll a bit down here, and I essentially just copy this. The reason I do the copying is simply because I never remember the order here. So the order is to take the training set for X, testing set for X, training set for Y, testing set for Y. And yeah, that's the order. Let me just tidy this up. So we've taken X and Y, and then we have a test size. Let's do the default, which is 33%. And let's set a random state to 42. So this is just so that you can reproduce the results. Running this, everything looks fine. We can now check that the shape is correct. So here we have X train and shape. And it has 67 values, which is two thirds, which is as it should be, and it has four columns. And you can of course test x test, for instance, here you get 33, and so on. So it looks to be fine. Doing this is just a nice benchmark test to see that we're on the right track. Now we need to import logistic regression classifier. So this is going into scikit-learn, and here we're going into again the linear model, and then import logistic regression. As Dina showed you with linear regression, we first need to initiate this. Here we can initiate it and let's save it as a log reg variable. Awesome. Now we need to fit the logistic regression on the training data. We have our training data with X train and Y train. Now we need to fit our model to the data. So take log reg and fit it with X train and Y train. If you remember vaguely from the slides earlier, the fitting here is essentially finding these parameters that I called A and B. So let's run this. This is incredibly fast simply because we only have like 67 observations, which is honestly very, very little. But in any case, we can now predict a new feature. So let's just make a new flower. Let's call it, well, new flower sounds good. And let's say that the values are 6.5. Let's say 2.8, 7.1, and 1.5. So here is our new flower. Looks good. Now we can do the prediction to see which class it is in. Then we do log reg that we have fitted to our data and do the prediction of our new flower. And here you can see you get back array one. That means that this is in class one. Let's scroll all the way up to the description because it's nice to have the actual thing. The two classes we were working with were these two. So this Iris Versicolor was renamed to the zero class. Iris Virginica was renamed to the first one. So based on the data of this flower, we predict that it is of species Iris Virginica. So what you saw here was a class prediction. You can also predict the probability for each class. What you then do is to do log reg, but instead of doing the predict, you do predict, but here you have also predict proba. A proba has just an abbreviation for probability. So let's again pass in the new flower. And here you can see the probabilities for each of the classes. So for the first class, it is really, really low. It's 0.004. And for the second one is 0.995. Essentially, you can interpret this thing here as it's saying, I'm 99.5% sure that this is of class one. What the usual predict method is doing is just to essentially compute the same, but then just choose essentially the value here that is highest. So here you say, yeah, I think it is of class one. We typically call this a class predictor because it predicts a class, but here this is what's called a probability predictor because it gives you more nuanced information regarding the probability of belonging to each class. Notice that we've used training sets of X and Y, but we haven't used testing sets yet. That's what we'll do in the next video with here evaluating the model with the accuracy score. But before going there, let me just make a very quick detour to talk a bit about estimators and predictors. So with Stina, you did linear regression. And with me, you're now at least partway done to doing logistic regression. You might have noticed that for a linear regression, you have like dot fit for fitting the method and dot predict for predicting. Also for logistic regression, you also have dot fit for fitting the model and dot predict for predicting. That's because both of these, both linear regression and logistic regression, are both estimators and predictors. 
So here I have a nice diagram. So essentially, a bit simplified, an estimator is something that has a dot fit method. You've seen that both linear regression and also logistic regression has this dot fit method. So they're both called estimators. They can take your data and estimate some parameters that they will then hopefully in some way use. But also they're both predictors. That means again, a bit simplified, that they have a predict method. So you've seen that both for linear regression and for logistic regression just now, that we can use a predict method to predict a new observation. In the case of logistic regression, since it is a binary classification, we can also do prediction with predict proba, which is this probability for belonging to each class. But in any case, both linear regression and logistic regression have a usual predict method. So the diagram indicates that predictors are also estimators. This might be a bit hard to wrap your head around because you've only seen predictors so far. But in the next module, when Stina takes over again, she'll tell you about pre-processing and pipelines. And when talking about this, she'll mention transformers. So transformers or again, as you can see by the diagram, also estimators. So they have a dot fit method, but they don't have a dot predict method. They instead have a dot transform method. So without spoiling too much, this will be something like, for instance, scaling your data. This is just essentially one way that scikit-learn groups things. So it talks about estimators as things having dot fit, predictors as things having dot predict, and transformers as things having dot transform. The reason why this is useful for you to know is that once someone says to you, hey, I have this super cool machine learning thing in scikit-learn, it is a predictor, then you automatically know that, okay, it is an estimator, so it has a dot fit method. It is a predictor, so it has a dot predict method. And you can kind of immediately get started using it. This is something that will become more and more obvious the more you go into this course and the more and more machine learning models you try out. And so that means that you can very quickly get up to speed with a new one. You don't need to spend an infinite amount of time remembering individual method names for each single estimator. Every estimator has a dot fit method and every predictor has a dot predict method. Again, this is a small digression. Stephen will talk about this a bit more, but for now, let's continue on and talk about accuracy score in the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about accuracy score. In the previous video, we essentially trained a logistic regression model, but how good is it? And an even more important question, how should we measure how good it is? When Stina did linear regression, I think she did a mean squared error for the metric used to evaluate the linear regression model. But now we have logistic regression and we need a different metric. An accuracy score is actually a very common metric to use for binary classification problems. Here's how it goes. The accuracy score of a binary classifier is given by, you take the number of correctly classified observations and divide it by total observations. And even though this might look a bit clunky, the accuracy score is very, very intuitive. So just look at this example. If your model manages to guess 10 out of 15 observations correctly, we get that the accuracy score is 10, because the numerator here is the number of correctly classified ones, divided by 15, which is the total observations. And this is essentially 66% correct. So just to play around, if you get 15 out of 15 correctly, you have an accuracy score of one, because that's 100%. If you get zero out of 15 correctly, that would be awful. And then you would rightfully so get an accuracy score of zero, the worst possible thing. So an accuracy score of zero is awful, an accuracy score of one is perfect, and an accuracy score of 50% is actually pretty bad. The reason for this is that if you only have two categories, like we have in binary classification, then just random guessing will give you roughly 50% correct. So if your model has an accuracy score of 50%, then it's no better than just randomly guessing whenever you get a new observation. Say you get an observation, just say, yeah, class zero, get a new observation, class zero, get a new observation, class one, just randomly predicting either zero or one, this gives you roughly 50% accuracy score. So you definitely want to aim for an accuracy score quite high. How high you can actually get depends on, of course, the data and the application. But I would say that if you get less than 0 0.6 or 0 0.7, it is quite bad. Before we get back to finish the coding, I just want to point out that accuracy score is one metric one can use for classification, but it's not the only one. We will look at others later in the course that is more suitable for when the dataset is not balanced. Recall that we said that our dataset was balanced because there were equally many observations of each category, so there were 50 observations for one of the species and 50 for the other. Don't worry about this for now, our dataset is balanced, so accuracy score is then a great metric to use. Now we're back in our Jupyter Notebooks, we need to understand how good our model is by using the accuracy score. This will be very similar to what Stina did with linear regression. First of all, we need to collect our predictions. Let's call a variable ypred. So this is log reg and use predict. And here we want predict on all the test values. You could find the accuracy score manually 
As you can probably see here, there will be a scikit learn function that does this automatically, but it's just nice to know that this isn't really hard to do manually either. So let's make a variable called accuracy. So how do I do this? Well, we have a numerator and a denominator. The numerator should be the number that is correct. So we just essentially use the sum function to do y pred equal equal y test. Here we're essentially summing up where the predictions are equal to the testing data. And then we should divide it by all observations. So this is just the length of y test. Running this works out fine. And here you can take a look at their accuracy and that is 0.93. So roughly rounded to 94%. So in 94% of all our cases, we can predict the correct class. And I think that's rather good. There is of course a scikit-learn function. So you can go into metrics here and import accuracy score. Then you can essentially make the same, except that you now use this accuracy score. We're doing exactly the same, except we're not really hard coding it. We're just passing in y pred and y tests. And we can print it out. We can see here that you get precisely the same thing. I would definitely suggest to you that you hard code it out to understand it better, like I did here, understand that computing the accuracy score is not really something that's difficult, but nevertheless, I would actually suggest to you to use the accuracy score implemented by scikit-learn. First of all, it ensures you that you don't really have any silly mistakes when you're doing this because this is well tested, but also the accuracy score is nicely encapsulated into a function, so it's just easier to reuse than a single line here. In conclusion, our logistic regression model is quite good at classifying these iris flowers to get a roughly 94% accuracy score. So that means that roughly six out of 100, or I guess three out of 50, will be categorized wrong, while 47 out of 50 will be categorized right. And that's not too bad. In practical applications, what you can really need from accuracy can really depend on the application at hand. So I hope this was informative. In the next video, I'll deep dive a bit into the technicalities of logistic regression. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you soon.